Hello again, everyone. It's Vince Ford from TradingWinds.com, and this is our update for April 3rd, 2022. Let's take a quick look at how things finished off on Friday. We did see a bit of a mixed close, pretty flat, more than anything. But it was certainly an interesting uh, week and an interesting month. Let's have a look. The Dow up 100 points on Friday after being lower earlier in the day. Um, right here on the daily chart, it looks like it's sort of you know, still at a spot where it, it's certainly looking more bullish than bearish. If you look at the uh, minor pivots, we do have higher highs and higher lows. We're above the 20. We're sloping. So it looks pretty good. But you know, there's still some resistance overhead. And, and you know, the last three days of the week, we did pull back. Um, but if you look at the higher time frames, and um, the weekly doesn't really show a whole lot, but the monthly... The monthly really shows a bullish picture here overall. Now, doesn't mean it's guaranteed that we break out to new highs. We could come back and take out this low, in which case I would expect a much stronger sell-off. But right now, judging by this formation here that we talked about last week and the week before these tails, it certainly looks like we're headed to new highs. So that's what we've got to keep an eye on. <clears throat> Excuse me. The S&P 500 up eight and a half points on Friday again in the midst of a retracement here but now while there is still some resistance overhead there's also some support below and again the long-term chart looks fantastic on the weekly the the, the on, on the monthly on the Nasdaq the sorry the s and I'm fumbling my words here this morning excuse me uh the Nasdaq if we start with the monthly looks pr probably the strongest of all here with those long wicks right at that upsloping 20. Looks like a great spot to start off a run. Um, on Friday, it did finish lower by about five points. Uh, again, has some support below and also has resistance overhead. So, you know, the, the best guess we can make here is that we will um, continue moving higher, but, you know, not have uh, that easy of a road as we cut through resistance. Um, Russell 2000 had breached this level earlier in the week, got rejected big time on Wednesday, Thursday followed through Friday, a bit of a bounce. So again, we're sort of in, in between here. We have a ton of resistance overhead. We have lots of support below as well. So this looks like we may be chopping around here for a little while. If we look at the monthly chart on the Russell, it certainly is starting to look more bullish. The hesitation here is all of this resistance overhead. So again, overall, I think the theme has turned to more of a bullish nature than bearish, uh, but we will still have some resistance overhead. If we look at other things like crude, crude was down a dollar one percent on Friday, and you know now. When we look at this daily chart, we can see the price went from above to below the moving average. It came back to retest it, did so successfully, and has followed through to the downside. Momentum has shifted as well. That 20 is now curling lower. So, you know, we're getting to a point where there should be some some support kicking in around 95. We're still at 99. Um, and, you know, with, with the situation in Ukraine ongoing and so on, um, it's hard to think of um, a bearish crude market, but right now it looks like we, sh we should at least come back to 95, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Gold down 30 points, similar formation as crude here. Of course, the longer term charts still looking very good here, but near term, I think we expect a bit more selling uh, in the days ahead. The dollar index finishing the week off pretty strong here i mean an early start to the week saw us uh, dropping lower and then we got a, a, a bit of a rebound we didn't quite make it all back but here we are back to that 20 period moving average so if we can get back above it we should we should make another run now if we uh widen the scope a little take a look at the, the ETFs for the different sectors starting with energy it still looks pretty good here um yeah minor lower pivot high so you know we, we do have lower highs but we have higher lows 
got a bit of a wedge going here. We're still above the 20. Uh, and with this kind of momentum, still quite bullish. We look at financials, XLF, crucial retest of that 20 here. Pretty choppy weekly chart. Again, if on, on these you look at the monthly, it's looking pretty bullish. Um, XLK, similar formation, not quite back to the 20 yet. Uh, XLP, actually looking better here. Consumer staples, uh, really strong move the last three weeks here and not slowing down. So it looks like it's certainly making a run for those highs. Utilities, screaming higher. I mean, th this one um, j just completely went against everything else and, and continued to run while others pulled back. Um, very strong bar on Friday as well. Should continue going higher. XLV looking pretty good as well. And this is still the daily chart. If we look at the long-term chart here, again, it looks fantastic. So it really, it really is looking more and more bullish here. XLY, uh, consumer discretionary is pulling back this past week. But again, there's tons of support back here. So we could see a bounce. Real estate continuing to move up nicely. And XLI, uh, which is industrials, big bounce off that 20 here. Um, still a negative finish to the week. Um, and a real messy looking chart, right? But you look at the month and it's starting to look much better. Materials here, flirting with uh, a move above those highs. Communications, which really is the one uh, sector ETF here that was beaten down the most. Um, now we can say we have a higher high. And it looks like it's trying to form a higher low. So not quite a bottom yet can be called, but um, you know, I certainly think if we put in a lower pivot here, and especially if we take out this this high here from last Wednesday, I I, I think we should really run. And lastly, retail still looking weak. This is the one sector that still looks weak here. Let, let's look at it on a monthly, and there you go. We're below the the uh the 20. Although momentum still pretty strong, we are below the 20, but the scary part is the lack of support here. So the retail sector is the one that may may continue to lag behind. So keep an eye on that. All right. Um, now, if we go to the news uh, expected out this week, on Monday, we get factory orders. It's really a light week for news. There are some important ones, but fairly light compared to most weeks. On Tuesday, we get trade balance report. We get the ISM non-manufacturing report, and and uh, we get a bunch of FOMC members speaking really throughout the whole week, not just Tuesday. Now, we also get total vehicle sales. On Wednesday, we get the usual MBA mortgage apps number. We also get crude oil inventories, um, gasoline inventories. But the biggie is the Fed meeting uh, minutes from, from their last meeting. So, you know... Whenever we get the, the minutes from the meetings, we get to see a closer picture as to how many uh, of those Fed officials were for a rate hike, how many were against, or what other comments were made, and how um, aggressive um, or not they, they, tend to, they, they intend to be. So uh, we might get something out of there that's fairly important. On Thursday, we get the jobless claims number. Uh, again, more Fed members speaking throughout the day. We also get the consumer credit number. And on Friday, we get wholesale inventories and the U.S. Baker Hughes rig count. So overall, I think we're, we're starting the week off with a bit of a bullish bias here. So look for some upside. Um, but again, I'm not expecting, you know, a, a huge run, but you know, more of a sort of just a slow grind here while we work some through some overhead resistance and then go from there. There's still a lot of issues hanging over this market. Inflation being a biggie, uh, Fed rate hikes and, and that schedule, uh, war in Ukraine. There, There's a number of things out there that could tilt this thing at any point. But right now, let's go with what we have. And I think we're looking at a potential move to all-time highs coming up, okay? Um, a quick reminder 
and you you should see a notice um, coming out later today for the live market chat tomorrow. I have a scheduling conflict, so we were we will be doing a live market chat at 10 a.m. on Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, not the usual 1 p.m. I apologize, we meant to mention this on Friday during our chat, uh, but we got so busy um, we forgot to do so. But look for a, an invite today to the live market chat for a 10 a.m. Eastern time chat on Monday. Okay, I really hope to see you there. But until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you on our next update.